the uh, Laboratory 3. Laboratory 3 is a break from amplifiers and we're moving on to current sources. We're going to look at figure 1, which is a basic current reference cell, and then figure 2, how we can have multiple output. The work for you to do is to do some calculations and to design those two current sources according to some specifications, as laid down here, but I also want you to start using a little bit of Excel. As a demonstration, I've already got some Excel ready to be, for you to see and use. That will also be loaded into um, Blackboard's as a module box. Figure 2, I'm going to leave you, leave you with limited data. I'm not going to tell you a great deal about how to do what you need to do there. Okay, everything else is noted on the, sh on the sheet. So let's close that. Let's have a quick look at your schematic diagram. Okay, so we'll launch little PowerPoint and do a little bit of maths. And we're going into pen mode. Okay. You need to design this component, okay, R1, which is the reference resistor. We know we have IC, which is the reference current coming down this branch, and out here we have I out, our output current. We can do it two ways. We can ignore the base currents or we can use the base currents. I'm going to use calculations and ignore the base currents. For you, I want you to cal calculate them as well. So, let's start. We have here one value of VBE. And VBE is the value of Q2 in this case. This is transistor 2. Over here we have transistor 3. So they're exactly the same. So let's draw our Kirchhoff's voltage loop. We have a volt drop across R1. And then we have VBE, because the base and collector are shorted. So we should be able to write this out. R1, which is our reference resistor, is equal to VCC minus VBE Q2, which is our transistor, divided by IC. Okay, and that's basically it. We now need to do a calculation as well for VBE Q2. Of course, that's VT, natural log, IC, over IS. Okay, and we are complete. We have now effectively calculated this value of R1. Do that, have a practice, and find out what happens. I'm hoping you'll find out that you're not quite as accurate as you thought, because we've got one base current, two base currents on this wire, and down here we have beta base currents, therefore flowing through this resistor we have beta plus two base currents. Okay, which basically is slightly different from IC. So what you should be calculating you perform the same calculation for VBEQ2 and VCC, however your current is going to be slightly different through that resistor. In fact, it should be IC, but we're going to have to have a scaling factor, because IC is here at this point in the circuit, and you want the current that's flowing through this component. So you need to account for those other two fractions. It's going to be beta plus 2 divided by beta. That means we've now accounted for a fraction. This number here, or this whole, this term, should be a fraction greater than 1. Okay? And that's the value of your R1 resistance. Let's go to a new page. Now what I want you to do once you've calculated that, I want you to calculate two things. I want a graph. RL I out, I ref. Okay, and I want uh, RL, I out, I ref. Okay, and then I want I out over I ref. So I want you to calculate a table of data starting at a thousand ohms, and I want you to run the simulation tool and find me a number for this reference current. So it should be one milliamp. How much current comes out? Okay. 
and then you calculate this value here. And then we do it again for 2000 ohms. And you find that one, and this one should be 1 milliamp. And you calculate that one. And you keep going until you've hit 11,000 ohms. Okay? And you've got your value there. This one again should be 1 milliamp. So you've got a nice table of data. What I'm expecting you to see is something like this. Okay? This value up here should be greater than 10k. Okay, the 11k will be down here. The gradient on here is a function of output current and a function of load. And if we extract that back to our transistor parameters, we should see it's a function of this line here. Let's put some dots on. Going back to VAF, the early voltage. Okay, IC and VCE. So let's go back to that schematic again. Because I'm going to change pen colour here if I can. I've not done this before. Um, here, this voltage, VBE, Q2, this voltage, VCE, Q3, okay? This voltage can vary, this voltage cannot. And we know that IC is equal to IS exponential VBE over VT. But we have this little problem at the output stage. Okay, so because we're modulating the output current by changing that load, we're changing this fraction, and this fraction effectively modulates my output current. So the output impedance affects that due to that um, output load impedance. So we're trying to prove that it's not perfect. Okay, or rather, you're going to do that. As a quick example, I'm going to stop um, looking at uh, PowerPoint for a moment, and I'm going to move over Okay, I'm now going to move over to Excel. I've provided this Excel file for you here. I've put all these values of resistance down. You want to put in your value of current that you obtain. And this is the value of reference current that I've obtained. Yours should be closer. And this is a calculation. In Excel, we see up here, look, we'll take this number in green or green square and divide by this square in blue. Okay, that's what Excel will do. So it's going to do that for all of those cells all the way down. So you put the numbers in and away you go. So let's do a quick calculation. Okay, I haven't put the right values of these components in. You're going to have to calculate those. I'll just put something in that's, I don't know, incorrect, but never mind. Hit 9.5k. I'm going to look at 1k. Okay, the circuit is simulated. Back to here. We'll turn on the currents on this waveform. We see our bias current is 984.7 microamps and this is 1.080 so we're not on track. So you're going to run this component and keep changing its its value once you've got the... sorry you design this component to the exact correct value to get 1 milliamp flowing. You should have 1 milliamp flowing in the output. You'll then vary this component through 1k to 211k and you're going to note the current down and this current down inside Excel. Okay. Now as it happens I've already got some numbers ready to go so I'm just going to copy those for you put them into here and as if by magic I have this nice little graph. Okay. As you can see here the current source will stop working because the load impedance is too great well, this gradient on here is directly proportional to the effects of early voltage. So there we go. That's the kind of work that I expect you to do. Your numbers will be different. Your current reference should be slightly different. It should be more accurate. Okay, time to have a play. In the second part of the laboratory, what I'm asking you to do is to have multiple output transistors. So in this case, we're 
back onto pan mode over here. Over here we have one reference current coming down here. We can calculate one value of VBE. In this case it's for Q6. We're obviously going to have an awful lot of base currents coming up here. One, two, three, four, five base currents are on this wire. So we need to account for the base currents flowing in this resistor. Otherwise we'll be inaccurate. Your design task is 250 microamps okay, in the reference and in each output stage you expect 250 microamps. So again I want you to experiment and figure out how you can calculate that. Your initial start is to design the reference resistor and then look at what happens with the load on these components. Okay, so this is multiple output. If you think about this in a real circuit Let's just change to the highlighter pen. What we have here, all of this circuitry is wasting current which isn't in use. Whereas here, this is a useful circuit block. So is this, so is this, and so is this. So these could be useful elements in a real circuit and over here all of this is wasted energy. One thing we don't want to do in most circuitry today is waste energy. Waste energy means we, we reduce torque time in your cell phone. Okay, so follow lab script, experiment and do a bit of calculation. Okay, that's the end of this screencast.